is Disney Queen Skelly here, so I apologize in advance if it is a little noisy. I just got a new air conditioner and it feels super nice right now and I tested how it sounds in terms of the fan with like how it sounds in the videos and it doesn't seem to actually affect it all that much on its highest setting. So thankfully I can still talk loud and you guys can still hear me and um, you know, it'll, it'll still be easier for you to hear me if I end up looking back on the videos and it's a little too loud, I will turn it down for future videos. But anyway, today we are actually going to be doing another Disney horror story. Uh, this one, like, I know I did like uh, two videos that were like 17 Disney scary stories or whatever, but instead of doing that, this time we are actually going to be focusing on like one story at a time for a little bit because the stories that I found are actually a lot longer than these ones were. They had like um, Reddit posts and I wanted to read the whole Reddit post for you guys and in fact it's funny because um, some of these people were either former Disneyland employees or they were um, Walt Disney World employees or they were guests or whatever it may be and I just wanted to share them with you guys because I thought these uh, people who posted it had very had very interesting stories to tell some I have actually heard before which I know you guys will as well especially with the one we are talking about today so uh, the one I'm gonna be reading to you today is called what actually happens when D Walt Disney World closes um, again you guys have probably already heard this story before it is a very well-known creepypasta but I figured I'd like to read it as well for you guys, see if you guys um, kind of like how I tell it as well. Um, obviously, um, this is going to be pretty much the same story. It's still really, really bone chilling. I was listening to Creepypastas while actually writing this, believe it or not. Um, but yeah, I just hope you guys enjoy this uh, scary Disney story. And uh, before we get into it, I would just like to let you know that before I get into the actual Reddit story, there is a small snippet of the story itself in the previous article before I go into the Reddit story. So just so if you hear things that end up being repeated, that's why. So, enjoy! Have you ever thought about all the people who make Disney World tick after the park is finally devoid of guests? Have you ever thought of all the disturbing things that could happen in a gigantic emptied amusement park? Well, you should. When we got to the break room, I realized I had left my bag where we were working. Damn it, there's no way I was spending $8 on a Coke and stupid bear claw from one of Disney's rip-off vending machines. I told the guys I was going to run back and get my bags, so off I went. I was hurrying along because we only got a half hour for lunch, and if we take even a minute longer to get back to our work location, there is hell to pay. And you all know how fast a half hour flies by unless you're working. Trying to make good time, I must have made a wrong turn in all the blackness. My stupid flashlight was in my tool bag, of course. I was attempting to feel my way around the track when I saw some light coming up ahead of me. They looked like they could be set of emergency lights, but they were quite dim and flickering. Who cares? Any port in a storm, right? I slowly made my way towards them and began to hear voices, but I couldn't make out any words. There was no one in the attraction other than us, or so we were told. Oh my god, after all these stories I was told, was I finally going to have one of my own? Alright guys, here is the official Reddit story. Working at Disney, ah, uh, the magical world of Disney. So much goes on off stage and behind the scenes to ensure that the guests have the most magical times of their lives once they arrive on the property. Ever seen a wet paint sign while walking through the parks? How about a maintenance cast member with a bag of tools? Anyone with a construction hard hat? Of course you haven't. That would ruin the experience that Walt Disney World is perfection. It's because that 99.99% .99 of all work goes on after the show is over. All the little mice that keep the place running like clockwork don't even sh start until the announcement is made over the radios we carry that the park is now clear. Then the crews get to work. Maintenance starts buzzing around on their golf carts. The custodial cast members bring out the large hoses to wash down every inch of the streets we all walk on, and the construction crews are allowed past the security perimeter gates to come in and do whatever needs to be done. That's where my story begins. I've worked construction most of my life. When work dried up up north, I moved to Florida, where some of my family have moved over 10 years ago. Naturally, I needed to find a job. I wound up applying for four and getting hired by a construction that shall remain nameless that live literally did almost all of the construction needs for the corporate mouse. I spent five or six overnights a week at various locations at Walt Disney World with coworkers, 
We weren't employed with Disney since we were not called cast members, doing whatever our foreman, foreman told us what needed to be done. Sweet gig, actually, even though it was very hard work at times. Just think how many people can truly say that they get to ride around Magic Kingdom, Animal Kingdom, etc. in the dead of night in trucks, golf carts, what have you, while the park is just about empty except for a skeleton crew. For about the first six months, I kind of kept to myself except for talking with the crew of the company that I worked with. Then I began noticing how chummy many of the Disney overnight crew was with our staff. Custodians, when working in the same areas as us, would come and talk to the boys as well as the overnight security cast members. I began to slowly get to know many of those folks as well. They, for the most part, were really nice. I got to know many of the night security staff, by face at least, at all four parks as well as the, F as well as the resorts. If you didn't know, Walt Disney World opened in 1971. It was actually not too common to come across someone who had been a lifer at Disney or knew someone who was. 40 plus years working for the mouse. God bless him. Even my foreman, who although did not work directly for Walt Disney World, was one of these. Boy, did they have some stories to tell to pass the time. As I adjusted more to the job, I began to get more comfortable with the su surroundings. The cast members grew more social towards me, and I was able to make my way through the parks while without getting too lost. Let me tell you, that is not an easy feat when you first start out working there, especially at night. Although it's not pitch black, there is very minimal lighting except where we put our floodlights to do work. Security is only using flashlights or the headlight of, our, of their carts to light their ways, and store lights are only on if someone is working in them. Quite eerie and yet cool at the same time. It's like a totally different place than during operating hours. As a matter of fact, one time when I decided to visit the park as a guest, I couldn't find a ride I wanted to go on because it looked so different during the day with all the colors, people, sounds, and music. One year of working at the place full time and I had to swallow my stupid pride and go get a map. Haha, <laughs> pathetic. Anyway, as I started conversing more and more with cast members, some of the security staff and I found out that we had a mutual interest in the paranormal. Of course, that would come up in conversation eventually when working graveyard shifts. Haha. <laughs> I would get to hear stories from them all the time. The famous ghost in the Pirates of the Caribbean ride, the murder slash suicide in one of the rooms at a certain resort, the jumped off the terrace at another, ghost of cast members that passed on that come back and say hi, the spooky occurrences at rides where some unfortunate guests would was killed. The stories went on and on. Although fun to hear, I won't lie, though it did give the whole property an ominous feel at times that a guest will never get to experience. Even co-workers of mine had stories to tell. Attractions turning on even though the lockout tagout systems are in place to ensure that they don't following someone to a break room and walking in to find no one in there of course the noises and voices when they were working alone ghost hunters jackpot so several months ago when arriving at work the foreman called our team over for a meeting he announced we would be starting a, a new assignment in the magic kingdom shortly we would be working on the seven dwarves mine train ride this attraction would be opening later in the year. Ha how exciting. Up until now, my crew, since I started working with them, had been doing mundane yet necessary assignments. We had the pleasure of pouring concrete, digging ditches, fixing bathrooms, good stuff. Now we were actually going to get to work on an attraction. Imagine me getting to tell my future wife and children that I helped make this as we were writing it. They would be in awe and so proud. The building was already up for the most part and we were going to be working on making it show ready. You know, making a building look like a mine instead of a inside and out. Fabricating rocks, fixating jewels, the works. When the time came to start this, he had us meet in one of the cast member break rooms inside the attraction. For those that don't know, most of, if not all attractions have break rooms inside that the public can't see. A cast member working the ride literally doesn't have to leave and if she slash he doesn't want to, even for a lunch break. He explained the job, who would be doing what each week, 
and all the normal details. Then he proceeded to tell us that as per Disney management, we were to all take our lunch breaks at 3 a.m. and to only take it in this particular break room we were in. That was kind of weird. Since my employment with them began, we were never told when and where to take lunch. We used to always stagger our breaks as well so that most of the crew was always working. Whatever, I guess. The mouse paid for our bills, and who the hell was I to question it? I was still the rookie, but I will say this. I saw what I was thinking in the eyes of my co-workers as well. We were only a group of 10 guys on this assignment, and we were broken up into groups of five. One group worked on the outside and one group on the inside of the attraction. It was a pain to work in that thing due to the size of the spaces where we had to work. Maybe one or two floodlights would fit in an area where we were working. It gave an effect of staring into a fire in the woods while working on a wall. It was bright as hell. When you come out of that space, you were as blind as a bat. The first few days, it became a running joke slash contest at who tripped on something and broke their ass the most each week had to pay for the drinks when we went out together. I paid up twice the first month. Thanks, Disney. I guess you could call me paranoid, but I would never leave my lunch bag in the fridge in the break room. I'm an absolute angry asshole if I get hungry and after having it stolen once at Animal Kingdom, I was not going to have it happen again. So I just carried it with me other with my other gear from then on. We were working on the opposite side of the attraction from the break room and was just about lunchtime. We cleaned up all possible trip hazards and went on break. When we got to the break room, I realized I had left my lunch bag where we were working. Damn it, there was no way I was spending $8 on a Coke and stupid bear claw from one of Disney's rip-off vending machines. I told the guys I was going to run back and get my bag, so off I went. I was hurrying along because we only get a half hour for lunch, and if we take even a minute longer to get back to our work location, there is hell to pay. And you all know how fast a half hour flies by unless you're working. Trying to make good time, I must have made a wrong turn in all the blackness. My stupid flashlight was in my tool bag, of course. I was attempting to feel my way around the track when I saw some light coming up ahead of me. They looked like they could be a set of emergency lights, but they were quite dim and flickering. Who cares? Any port in a storm, right? I slowly made my way towards them and began to hear voices, but I couldn't make out any words. There was no one in the attraction other than us, or so we th were told. Oh my god, after all these stories I was told, I was finally going to have my own one of my own. As much as felt the hairs on my neck stand up, I was excited as well. Even though I really like hearing about ghost stories, I can't say that I'm really truly afraid of them. I just don't want them in my home. Other than that, I find the idea of them fascinating. I slowly peeked my head around the next corner. I wish to God it was a ghost I had found. It was a large, at least compared to where we were working, open space, and there was a fabricated stone slab made to look like a natural rock formation in the center. Six figures in suits were around it in a circle. Five were holding candles while one was reading off what looked like an old piece of parchment. What he was saying was beyond my knowledge. Not English from what I could hear. Every time the main suit would finish a sentence or two, the others would repeat the last word. As I crouched there amazed, I saw what looked like a flash of yellow and blue stirring from on top of the altar. There was someone on it, a woman. She stirred again, and I thought my eyes were playing tricks on me. It looked like one of those college program kids that get to be friends with the characters, completely dressed like Snow White. She was gagged and bound. What the hell was I seeing? Her eyes were huge and filled with fright. Tears were streaming down her face, making her overly done makeup run. As much as she struggled, she could barely move. The man with the parchment stopped reading. The others all produced some crudely made daggers and made their way to her. Two of them went to each of her arms, two to her legs, and one stood at the top of her head. The leader, for lack of a better word, made a gesture with his hands and said one more incomprehensible word and others moved in the two by her arm sliced her arms from mid bicep down to her wrist two others did the same from mid thigh to the tops of her feet the fifth one actually carved what looked like a half moon on her forehead i stifled a scream and closed my eyes 
I could hear muffled screams and smell copper in my nostrils and taste it in the back of my throat. I opened my eyes briefly to see the leader produce a knife, walk over to the altar, and lift poor Snow White's chin up towards him. That's when I turned and ran. I got back to the break room, sprinting through the door. I must have looked half crazed because one of my buddies said, What the hell happened to you, and where is your lunch bag? I didn't even answer him. I just stood there. He looked me over one more time and decided to call the foreman over the radio to come talk with me. The foreman came in, took one look at me, and asked if I was feeling okay. I shook my head. He told me to go home for the remainder of my shift. I called out sick the next three days. In the comfort of my home, I attempted to rationalize what had happened. It had to be a gag, right? Was it my boys with an elaborate welcome to the crew trick? I mean, God, Walt Disney World is crammed full of college kids, late teens and early 20 year olds away from home and college getting paid crap just so they can put Disney on their resumes, just fornicating and causing havoc every chance they get, playing tricks so they can put it on their blogs or Twitter or whatever else stupid things they use to get attention had to be. On my first night back to work, I literally had to force myself not to turn my car around at the security gate when the guard opened it for me to enter. When I got to the break room, one of the lifters, lifers I worked with was sitting there seemingly waiting for me. He told me the clock to clock in, leave my stuff with him, and go meet the foreman over by the main entrance. I looked at him quizzically since it was pretty far from where the mine was and it was heavily frowned upon for us non-cast members to be found wandering, wandering far from where we were assigned. I stated as such and he just said, go, you'll be with your boss so it would be his ass and not yours if someone said something. I made my way over to the main entrance and found him under the train station sitting on one of the benches. He told me to sit. We sat there for about five minutes without speaking. He lit up a cigarette and I did as well. During the night shift, you could get away with this if you were careful about it. He asked me what had happened to me the other night. I just shrugged, looked at the newly posed down ground and exhaled. He put his hand on my shoulder and said that I was a great coworker. The other guys all liked me a lot. He didn't want to lose me and that he was surprised I came back after the way I had looked. I told him that it wasn't far from the truth. He asked me if I was just sick or if something had happened. He also asked me if maybe a cast member manager had given me a hard time and if so, he'd handle it. I shook my head and said that he wouldn't believe me and would probably fire me for being a nut if I told him. He then said something that made me feel it was okay to tell my story. He said, I've worked here since it was just flat land and dirt roads. Nothing you say can shock me. I looked up at him dead in the eyes. When I saw that he was telling the truth, I began to explain so everything from the beginning. I ended the story when the other guy told me to come see him. My foreman sat there, flicked his cigarette butt, and grounded it into the floor. A huge Disney no-no. He had sat there, nodding through the entire story, not interrupting once. Never once a smirk, a smile, a look of disbelief, a custodial truck happened to drive by when the headlights flashed on us. I had seen that all the blood had seemed to drain from my foreman's face. He breathed in and exhaled once from the mouth. He had the beginnings of tears in his eyes. He finally spoke. What I'm about to tell you, kiddo, not many have been here long enough to know, and those who do know almost never speak about it. It's sort of a taboo subject, and the few that do talk about it are too old to care or have had too many scotches. He smiled half-heartedly at this, and I thought maybe he might stop, but he continued. I have lived in this area for almost 80 years. I have barely been out of state, less times than I can count on one hand. Orlando has only, been, has only looked this way for a short time. If you could have seen this land in the time I grew up here, you would be amazed. Marshland and orange groves, nothing else. Until Uncle Walt decided this was the spot for his next incredible theme park. There were practically nothing. Humans have been inhabiting this land for a very long time. The Ace Apalachee, the Calusa, the Timuqua, the Tocobago, all native Indians that lived in or around the land you are sitting on right now. The Paleo Indians were here before them. Well, I'm no historian, but I guess them Indians at some point figured out 
this land was a little spoiled. Spoiled as in not just bad, but spoiled as in had a little child throw a tantrum if it doesn't get its way. At some point when the cultures were not having good weather or crops, what have you, they figured out that a blood sacrifice could do the trick. Every time they built a large structure in the area, they drew blood. But for whatever reason, the sacrifice had to do with the structure being built. For example, if the Indians were building a religious structure, a shaman had to be sacrificed. If a shelter was building a barn or orange grove, a farmhand had to be one. You get me? And it had to be alone by, done by the elders of the town. Couldn't be done by just anyone, by the elders slash most influential ones in the area. You ever seen that movie Pet Cemetery by Stephen King? Like that, but the important people involved. Do you know the story about Disney buying this land? He bought it not under the Disney brand, but hundreds of pseudo companies. He didn't want anyone to know he was going to build a theme park here because the locals may not have sold as cheaply as they did. So he did what he did. I wonder if through all this half-truth bargaining, if him or his round table executives ever wondered why so many were willing to sell at that price. Were they done having to do with the despicable to make a profit here? Did many of them want out? It can really make you wonder. And how come supposedly no one dies at Disney? How come all people are proclaimed dead off the property? And why do we like so many college kids that are supposedly running around here? Think about it. I just gotta tell you, because I think you may deserve it after you've seen what you've claimed to, the pavers that be here are powerful. More powerful than just being a Disney executive. They pretty much rule everything. You think Club 33 is exclusive? He laughed, but with no humor. The club you stumbled upon rules more than just a theme park. If you talk about what you've seen, your life may be in danger. I just sat there trying to soak in what I had just heard. This was insane, and then my foreman said one more thing. If you think that was bad, just imagine what I heard at Wart Building It's a Small World. I swear I'm still hear those screams of those kids once I close my eyes at night. Forty years after, my reply, I quit. Ah, oh, the magical world of Disney. I still get shakes when I think ab about it. I hate every fucking Disney commercial that comes on TV. And they come on a lot. I get goosebumps every time. I see that Universal is hiring. I need a, a job. Should I apply? Alright guys, and that is it for today's uh, scary Disney story. I'm sorry if it sounded like I couldn't read today. I made a stupid mistake. As I was writing everything, I was writing it in different colors, and some of the colors I had chosen were very, very light, and I didn't realize it at the time. So I am going to just start writing with the darker colors from now on, and maybe just save the lighter colors for something else, maybe... I don't know, for uh, my other notebook I have, it's literally like a black uh, background and I, it's made for lighter pens, so I think I'll just use the lighter pens for that, so sorry about that guys. Um, I'll get better with reading uh, soon once I just switch to the darker colors, but other than that, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you did recognize this scary story as I did while I continued to write it, but anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. Bye little skeletons, stay safe, I love you guys.